In the previous two lectures we discussed four categories of diuretics. The carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, loop diuretics, osmotic diuretics and thiazide diuretics. Today we'll discuss the potassium sparing diuretics. As usual, you'll find the lecture's PDF down in the description. Potassium sparing diuretics act in the collecting tubule, to inhibit sodium reabsorption and potassium excretion. So they increase the loss of sodium in urine causing diuresis, and increase the concentration of potassium in the blood causing hyperkalemia. There are two categories of drugs within this group, aldosterone antagonists, and sodium channel blockers. Let's first talk about aldosterone antagonists, such as, spironolactone and aplaranone. First you should know that, in most edematous states, blood levels of aldosterone are high, causing retention of sodium. Spironolactone and aplaranone, antagonize the activity of aldosterone, resulting in retention of potassium and excretion of sodium. They are competitive antagonists of aldosterone receptors, causing inhibition of sodium and potassium exchange sites of the collecting tubule, so increase the loss of sodium in urine causing diuresis. Let's talk about their therapeutic uses. They have lower diuretic effect compared to other diuretics, but they are useful as they cause potassium retention in the blood. So they are often given in conjunction with thiazide or loop diuretics, to prevent potassium excretion that occurs with these drugs. Spironolactone is effective in clinical situations associated with secondary hyperaldosteronism, such as hepatic cirrhosis and nephrotic syndrome. In contrast, it has no diuretic effect in patients with no significant circulating levels of aldosterone, such as in Addison disease. Aldosterone antagonists are used in heart failure and hypertension. Spironolactone is effective in ascites, which is the accumulation of fluid in the abdominal cavity, that is a common complication of hepatic cirrhosis. Spironolactone is often used off-label for the treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome, as it blocks androgen receptors and inhibits steroid synthesis at high doses, so it can help to offset increased androgen levels seen in this disorder. Now let's talk about their adverse effects. Hyperkalemia. Spironolactone can cause gastric upset. It may also induce gynecomastia in male patients, and menstrual irregularities in female patients, as it chemically resembles some of the sex steroids. Aplaranone has less endocrine effects than spironolactone. And finally let's talk about the other category, sodium channel blockers. Triamterine and amyloride, block sodium transport channels, resulting in a decrease in sodium and potassium exchange. Their ability to block the sodium and potassium exchange in the collecting tubule does not depend on the presence of aldosterone. These agents also are not very effective diuretics, so they are commonly used in combination with other diuretics, for their potassium sparing properties. The side effects of triamterine include potassium retention, increased uric acid and renal stones. That's all for this lecture. If this lecture was useful for you, leave like and a comment of your opinion, subscribe if it's your first time here and keep following us.